Hi everybody, this is Arkady Freckman, a New York City personal injury trial attorney. And today I wanted to talk about how we work up a case. And I think the best way to do that is to talk about a client call that I received just last night and all of the steps that we're going to take in this case. So a gentleman called me last night. He actually left a message with our answering service at about 7.30 p.m. And I called him right back from my cell phone and I spoke with him. And it turned out that his wife, who was pregnant, was exiting her apartment building in Queens. And there's three steps from the exterior door down to the sidewalk. And one of those steps had a chip. And so her foot went into that hole or uh, half circle chip in the step and she lost her balance and she fell. And she it turned out she fractured her ankle really badly. So the first step was to ask him to send us photos, which he did right to my cell phone. And I looked at the photos and I saw that the edge of the concrete step was damaged. So you have these concrete steps. You have the tread, which is the horizontal part. You have the riser, which is the vertical part. And then the edge was worn and it was jagged. And one particular part of that edge was actually like a moon, like half crescent, you know, half like this way, half um, like a half circle. And that's where her foot got into and she lost her balance. So now I think we have liability in that we have photos, we have measurements, we understand what caused the individual to fall. And unfortunately she had a bad trimalleolar fracture of her ankle and she's gonna need surgery actually today. Right now, in fact, she's having surgery, open reduction, internal fixation. They're gonna to have to put in a plate with screws to fix the, uh, the injury. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to hire a safety expert, probably an engineer, and he's going to go out there. He's gonna take photos, he's gonna take measurements. And we, the one we use is very, very detail-oriented. He'll actually do a very thorough report, probably about 50 pages I've seen in the past, even up to 80 pages sometimes. And he'll find all of the building code violations, he'll measure the handrail, the, 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 the steps, you know, everything. So that's a very, very deep dive that you sometimes need. I mean, in a case like this, we may not even need it because we already have a hole in the step, but you know, it's better to err on the side of caution and be thorough. So we like to do that for our clients. And since she has this serious injury, she's going to be in the hospital for a few days, then she's going to be discharged and she'll start uh, probably a course of physical therapy, as well as she will need a good orthopedic expert. We may use her surgeon at the hospital, or if that surgeon is unwilling or unable to be a treating doctor going forward, then we may just send her to one of the top uh, best-in-class uh, specialists for ankles in uh, New York City. So that's really like on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no real bright line rule. You have to be a little bit malleable in terms of the doctor. Some doctors uh, like we had another case, actually the same injury, a trimalleolar fracture that was set for trial July 6th, that actually got adjourned to October because the defense and the insurance company were not ready. But we couldn't uh, you know, have the doctor wait until October because we had already paid the doctor and he took time off. So we did a video deposition, we preserved his testimony, and now we're gonna play that deposition at trial in October and it's all preserved on video. And he did a great job. He's actually never testified before this doctor. And it's the same injury. It's a pylon trimalleolar fracture, a really serious injury. If you actually put that into YouTube, you could see there's some doctors that explain what it is in great depth. Um, and they actually show animations and they show um, everything that you, if you're interested to learn more about this injury. But uh, so, so the point is that, you know, in that case, the treating doctor, the one who did the surgery will and did testify. But in this case, we don't know yet. Sometimes doctors just say, you know, I don't testify ever as a matter of course, just I don't, I don't do it. And then your choice is either to subpoena that doctor, but then, you know, you're kind of forcing him or her to do what they don't want to do. So it might not be the best testimony for you. Or you could just go out and have the plaintiff go to another doctor, like an orthopedic specialist and have treatment with that with that doctor. And we have a you know a lot of orthopedic doctors all over in Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx, all over New York City and beyond. So that should be fine. And then, you know, the next step will be to do a deep dive into the building to find out the owner of the building, to find out the management company if there is one, 
and there are different resources online, like for example, the DAP portal, where you could see all the prior complaints. And if there was a complaint about this specific hole, then you have liability is even stronger. And then you file a lawsuit. And when you file a lawsuit, the insurance company for the building will hire a defense lawyer to appear in the case. Now the defense lawyer has appeared in the case, right? So at this point, you already have a lot of your medical evidence. And what you do is you do a bill of particulars and you explain all of the injuries, what they did wrong, and then you file for a preliminary conference or a scheduling order with the court. And then at that point, the court will say, okay, plaintiff give uh, documents to the defendants, such as medical records, and defendants give documents to the plaintiff, such as inspection records or maintenance records for those stairs, cleaning records. You know, we, we usually have a template that will we'll tailor our discovery requests based on the case. And we'll try to do uh, individual discovery requests depending on the type of case that it is. So then once all that document gets exchanged, they'll schedule depositions and they'll be court ordered, meaning the deposition of the plaintiff who will have to testify about how she fell and about her injuries, and then the deposition of somebody from the, uh, the, the building. Probably the, they might produce the landlord, they might produce the uh, super, or somebody familiar with those steps who was responsible for them. And then once all that is done, you put the case on the trial calendar. You're certified as trial ready by filing a note of issue, and then it waits. In Queens, it's about a year, maybe a little bit more. You wait on the calendar, and then they call you for settlement conferences, pretrial conferences, you may do a mediation, and then finally you get a trial date and then you pick a jury and you go to trial and you either settle the case or you get a verdict from a jury. So that's pretty much the whole process. And even though we just, you know, spoke to the client for the first time yesterday, last night, we're already thinking about all of the steps and we're already thinking about the best way to keep the client happy as well. Maybe having a team um, organized. We, we've organized our firm into litigation groups. So for example, I'm working with another attorney, Arlene, so me and Arlene, and then we have one um, paralegal who's actually our office manager, Jennifer, so we're one group, and then we have other attorneys. Richard works with uh, Michelle. Richard is a senior attorney. He's a trial attorney with over 25 years of experience, and he works with Michelle, who has about three, four years experience. So the senior attorney works with the junior attorney, and they have a paralegal, Stephanie, who's very good. So it's a, it's a, that's a litigation group, and then they have a, a cases assigned to them, just a few cases, so they could give those cases excellent attention. And then they meet as a group, and they hold each other accountable, and then I could also jump in and meet with them and speak to them and kind of oversee everything in their group, but at the same time, I have my own group. So that's the way we work, and I think it's a pretty efficient way of working. We've tried other systems in the past, and I think this is probably one of the best. But going back to this client, so... The important thing is to keep them informed, right? Because you could be doing any one of these steps. You could be going to a deposition or you could be getting medical records. But if the client doesn't know it, then the client might be disconnected. The client might feel abandoned. So it's really important to give that client access, right? Give them, hey, here's my cell number. Text me anytime. Here's my cell number. Call me. Here's my email. We respond to emails same day. If you call our office, we get back to you within 24 hours, you know, and that way the client feels like they are speaking to an attorney and they also have access to their paralegal, to their case manager, to the firm, and the firm is working as a whole unit. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to make it as frictionless as possible, make it as seamless and easy as possible for the client. But I thought this was an interesting example because we were preparing for trial this summer in that other case with the exact same injury, and that case also is in Queens, and now we get another case with, this, with a similar injury. The defective conditions, the liability is a little different. The first case, the older case, where we had a trial, where we have a trial in October, is more of a carpeting on the step where the carpeting got loose and got detached from the step. So when the foot thought it was stepping on the actual step, the wooden step, the foot maybe hit the carpeting and there's nothing to support um, the foot. You know, there's just carpeting. So then loss of balance and a fall. And here, similarly, you have a concrete step, but you have a concave half circle hole, the foot gets in there and then also loses its balance and falls. So similar, but a little bit different in terms of um, liability, but the injury is, is the same injury. It's a trimalleolar fracture. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. This is just one of the ways that we, um, you know, 
investigate our cases. We, we speak to the client right away. We go to the scene ourselves. We hire a safety expert. We do a deep dive online to find out prior complaints, ownership information, everything we can. And then we file a lawsuit and we keep the client informed. That's very important. Okay, our goal is helping serious injury victims and their families and let us know if we can help you. If you um, enjoy watching our videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. That allows us to make more videos for you. And if you have any questions, just text me. It's 347-566-9595. While working on all these New York cases, I've also been doing some consults with people out of state. I did one in Mississippi, Florida, Texas. Um, I have some going on in uh, California a lot of cases in California. So, you know, whatever anyone needs, Pennsylvania also, we have a few in Pennsylvania, whatever anyone needs, um, I'm happy to, um, you know, just give you a free consultation. If I can help, you know, I will. I, if I can add value, if I see that something is wrong or that you should ask this question of your lawyer, I'll tell you what that question is and just help you. I'm not interested in, you know, taking over uh, cases from other lawyers unless the client wants that, unless they're being abandoned, unless I can add value to the case, then I'm happy to do so. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Have a great day. Let us know what questions you have and what videos you want to see because that's what it's all about. It's all about serving uh, the public, serving and helping injury victims. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day and um, please stay in touch with us. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.